Hey guys, and welcome back to part 7 of the Soul Level 1 Guide. We've been rewarded with the Lord Vessel, and now we're going to get our final big reward, our, our final big ability, which is, of course, the ability to invade without the need for consumable items. So, smash your way through the Titanite Demon, he'll be easy since you can kill him really fast with his club. Uh, Titanite Demon or Prowling Demon, they're also known as, both names are correct. Uh, they're actually vulnerable to lightning, so, fun fact there. But, uh, you can see running all the way through the forest here. We're gonna open the big door. And this is where we're gonna fight Sif, the wolf, the pet of the pet and friend, really, of Artorius of the Abyss. So, run around and grab the Hornet Ring. That's another ring we can make use of if we want to, but uh, here is what we're really here for. Starting it off right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's how you'll want to start the fight, is get hit immediately. It provides good luck. But uh, Sif is not a very hard boss. I could even be two-handing and finishing this quicker. I could use Power Within here is also an acceptable option. The thing about Sif is at this point with our shield, we can block all of his attacks except one. I'll point it out when it happens. But we can actually block all of his attacks, but they're super easy to roll through as well. His, the actual attack happens very quick. And it has like a very obvious wind-up, so just the timing of it makes it super easy to dodge. But even if you don't dodge, you can shield everything except this. That double spin. That's the one that you can't shield because the first hit will take a lot of endurance. And look how badass he is walking back here. Look at that stare. Ah, so intimidating. Sip is so cool. But uh, that second hit on that double swing will break through and deal significant damage. If you don't want to dodge, if you're afraid of dodging, don't have the timing down, whatever, just roll backwards on the double swing, block everything else to get closer. But rolling, obviously the best way, it allows you to bypass his attacks without uh, wasting any time, it lets you get close quicker. Just uh, try to stay under him as much as you can. <laughs> Just gives me a little hug and jumps away while I heal. But overall, I mean, just not, not very challenging. You can see there, I actually shielded that first hit and continued to roll. And so you could also do that too. I kind of discovered that on accident, but that's kind of cool. Block the first hit. And then if you roll right after that, you can get to him before the second hit comes around. So that's just kind of cool. Gives you a good chunk of souls, 40,000. I spent that on my Pyromancy Flame, which is, of course, where we want to spend most of our souls. And I ascended it to the, well, ascended Pyromancy Flame. It puts it back at plus zero, but it's actually much more powerful. And so, next up, um, this step is optional. I'll say right now, you don't need to do this. But it's something I know a lot of people want to do. It's something we'll, we should do eventually. I'm running through, grabbing the binoculars. That's not what I'm talking about. But we're going to hit the catacombs. And I'll show you the quick way to do this. I mean, I say it's unnecessary, but it takes literally five minutes to do this. Uh for the main goal. We're gonna grab the Rite of Kindling so we can get Firelink up to 20. And we're also going to grab our Fire Weapon. We're gonna open up the way to Vamos. He opens up a shortcut when you discover him. And so we're gonna open that up and we'll have easy access to him for the rest of the game. So it's something that I would encourage a lot of people to do. Uh, fire weapons are good to have as another option. Again, the fire hand axe is something I'd like for PvE. 
I tend to just stick with the club once I have it at a plus five lightning. Uh, just because it's good. It does a lot of damage, but really, I mean, the, the a fire hand axe is super good, too, if you guys are looking for something quicker. So, I will show that. So, we'll go through the catacombs real quick. And so, now, we can run right through here. So, I mean, this, what I'm going to show you right now, is how you want to do it if you want to get through and get the right of kindling right away. I'll show you guys the shortcut. So if you want to take the shortcut, you're going to just uh, get past these guys. You can take one hit. As long as you have a fair amount of health, you'll be okay. But you can stop to heal up here if you want. But uh, you can just walk off. I recommend rolling off. That was actually kind of risky doing it that way. But uh, still made it. You want to just roll off onto that nub that sticks out. Watch over that guy. <laughs> And uh, just roll down here, or walk, or look at that! Look, you notice how that hit went over me because I was on the ground crouched. That was so cool. But uh, after that, just jump down here. There'll be a couple bone wheels, but if they're focused on you up there, you should be able to get around them fairly easily. We have the wolf ring, so they won't stun lock us immediately. Our shield is good enough stability to block them, so you should be able to run through just uh, just fine. But we're going to go through and actually get to Vamos. He opens up a hole in the wall down there, but it's not open until you visit him the long way first. So just pulling out great combustion. You're going to want to kill that guy as soon as possible. Again, backstabbing is very effective because it gives you that invulnerability while you're doing it. And so you could just backstab him while he's running away. That's probably the best method. Although if your pyromancy flame is higher, then I'm sure you could kill him in one hit. I almost did. But other than that, I mean, once you kill those um, necromancers... Is that their official name? I believe it is. Either way, they are necromancers. Once you kill the necromancers, it's easy enough. The skeletons will stay dead. Of course, divine weapons, or, um, yeah, divine, <laughs> divine weapons, but I always forget the name of those, because nobody ever uses them, divine, occult, nobody, anyways, so, once you kill those necromancers, the skeletons will stay dead, divine weapons will make them stay dead, But you're just going to want to make it through these guys. You can whack them. I mean, since it only takes one hit, you can down them with almost no effort. If you don't want to have to try to roll through them. But, I mean, it's it's easy enough. Those spike traps on the walls, they won't really stun us either. Except, well, <laughs> unless you get really close to them. If they hit you with the tips, it won't stun you. So to shield up, run through, make your way to this guy as quick as you can. And that's another one down. You know that gif about coming to the wrong neighborhood? Look at my health, look at all these guys. I think I'm in the right neighborhood, guys. I like it just fine here. This is my neighborhood now. <laughs> So anyways, head down here. These side rooms have skeletons in them. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. This guy will be down here. He's easy enough to just walk around. Again, you can give him a quick smack, too, if you really wanted to. Went for a leap attack, let my guard down, and he got me. But uh, they're easy enough to just get to and beat on. Having the wolf ring right in this area makes a huge difference. If you're not using that, I recommend you at least put it on for this area. Just watching for skeletons, and you're gonna want to just walk straight off that. That's the easiest way you'll you'll survive for sure. Just heal up down here, cause there actually might be skeletons down here, and you'll see when I go down here, it triggers a cutscene, and there actually is a skeleton down here that will continue to fight you. And so that hole in the wall is what he opens up, and so that'll allow us to use the shortcut I showed earlier to get to him very quickly. So you can go ahead and get your uh, your hand axe up to a uh, fire plus five, 
We don't have the ember to go to plus 10. And we don't have enough chunks anyways. But uh, we'll grab that in the demon runes. So there will be a couple of these bone wheel skeletons out here. You can just kind of bait them into coming. Just try not to turn your back to them and you'll be okay. See, even with two of them on my shield, I was able to uh, make use of the stability, the awesome stability of the ball or knight shield and just block them. And there's a couple here, but whatever. I was like, with those other other three dead, I was like, ah, whatever. There's not enough to really be a, a big threat to us. They got some hits in, but nah. And so here is the boss we want to fight. This is Pinwheel, who stole the power of Gravelord Nido. And he's really scary. Oh, this fight is so hard. Oh man, I can't believe how hard this fight is. Oh, wait, it's not hard at all. Never mind. <laughs> which is why this takes five minutes to do, and which is why I recommend it. We can get the Rite of Kindling, something we probably just eventually want. It's nice to have a bonfire at 20, uh, so you can rest at it and warp to another one if you want and have 20 flasks. It's nice having at least one. But what you're going to want to do is um, put all your stuff in storage except for Havel's set. And so, as you guys, I'm sure many of you can guess now, I'm going to be showing the easiest way to fight the Four Kings. A lot of people like to dodge them, and a lot of people like the fight. I don't really like the Four Kings fight. For whatever reason, I don't know, never grew on me very much. So I, t I tend to just go Havel on them. And so here's how we're going to do that. You're going to pick up Iron Flesh from Laurentis and head down this way. You guys know this shortcut. Uh, you know, guys know this area. We're going to run over here and uh, jump across. And then just head down to your left. And that puts you right at the Four Kings. This is by far the easiest way to get here. Don't have to fight anything. There's no uh, Dark Wraiths in the way. So it makes it very easy. Get away from that door as quick as you can, because those ghosts will hit you through that wall still, and even like follow you in a little bit. You'll see I, I also equipped the uh, Covenant of Artorias right away. Make sure you have that on before you jump into the Abyss. That's why I equipped her right away. I've forgotten a couple times in my time. So, just load up on Havel. We got the ring on. We got Iron Flesh ready. And we're going to go for it. This basically makes the Four Kings a joke fight. A lot of people don't like this method because it is so easy. But again, that's kind of what this guide is about. I know a lot of people also have trouble with the Four Kings, so we'll make it easy on us. Now, I should have maybe gotten in closer before using us, but that's okay. I could have shielded there either, but I was like, whatever. We got Iron Flesh, we're invincible, except he's kind of hurting us a lot, but that's okay. Once you get close to him, the hilt of his sword does almost no damage. The end of it, the farther out you go, the more damage it starts doing. And so, pff, there you go, that's one down. So we're way ahead of the curve on the spawns, well, kind of, <laughs> there is one right there. But we're just on time. So run in as close as you can first, because even with Iron Flesh, they do a, quite a bit of damage at the far end. So you want to get as close as you can as fast as you can. You should be able to run in without risk of dying. The biggest thing to watch out for is that grab attack, though. You don't want to let them grab you while you're low on health. And I'm not even two-handing yet. I probably forgot to do it. And this fight is still going to go okay. I just remembered here to two hand. I got kind of lucky with that. He wouldn't have killed me. But uh, it was weird that he missed. Just in general. So this fight is all about topping off your health. Just staying healed and just watching out for that grab attack. Don't get grabbed at low health and you'll be just fine. Just be very cautious. You have all the time in the world as long as you just keep healing. That's the one thing. Don't let your don't let your health get below half. I don't even let it get below three fourths. Just keep an eye on your stamina. 
when you run out of Iron Flesh, you could also use Stamina Grass, but as you can see, there's really no need for it. Now we're ahead of the curve, and that guy's all the way over there. Now this guy's gonna use his little cast. This got me a little worried, because if that uh, hit me, and then he hit me, that might be enough to kill me. So at that point, I wanted to get this done as quick as possible. But if you run right at the king, one of the four kings, as you can see, it kind of just spirals around you. It won't hit you. It can, but there's a good chance it won't. So, but at that point, you're going to want to unload on him. You might want to save some great combustions in case of that emergency, because that's a little quicker than the melee. But with that done, here is our final reward. And I feel like we graduated. I feel like we graduated to the thief mask. I'm going to start wearing this with the black sorcerer gloves. It's only one point less of defense, and uh, it looks cooler. We've graduated to our, our red-eye hair. It matches the orb we'll use. Which was coincidental, but I'm going to pretend I did it on purpose. So, talk to him, tell him you want to be enlightened, answer yes, and let's just enjoy this now, moment, shall we? Place the Lord Vessel upon the altar. Alright, let's skip the doors. Whatever. <laughs> we saw the cool part. Anyways, head back to this disgusting dude, and he will eat you again. Good old calf. That toothy serpent. And so, here's the, uh, here's the taxing part. Join his covenant, of course. Now, burn your twin humanities and as many humanity as it takes to get to ten. This is a lengthy process, let me tell you and then offer all the ten humanity. Through the magic of editing, this takes a very short time. It takes very long <laughs> when you're actually playing, but bear through it, because it's worth it. We get our red eye orb. Now we can invade with absolute freedom. Anywhere, any level, any time with unlimited uses, we have graduated to the ranks of the Dark Ranks. But that's not all we have to do. There's still a lot more for an SL1 Dark Wraith to have, and there's more places to go. So, a lot to look forward here too, guys. I'm going to show you guys how to finish out this build and beat the rest of the game this way. And like and favorite if you want to support the series. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye